Yeah, I get these type of comments quite often. So, first of all, it's beautiful to see someone so passionate about the modes. Secondly, let's have a chat about it and shine some light on this topic. If you've ever found yourself confused by modes and how they fit into your plane, then in today's video we're diving deep into the world of modes so you can light up your fretboard like never before. <laughs> And for those who are new here, then welcome, it's your boy Lucas, the curly mustache, and I help guitar players to get over that intermediate rut to finally get their playing where it deserves to be after all those years. If interested, that link is in the description. And without further ado, let's dive right into our today's video about modes. Moods. So the first approach is using modes as scale degrees. But before you write it off and say it's not correct, hear me out. I'm fully aware that brass players or singers don't think that way, simply as they're dealing with way fewer notes. Here on guitar, we're going up and down over 6, 7, 8 strings and over 24 frets. So we end up with shit ton of combinations and we got to somehow learn how to navigate through it all. That's why the shapes are a huge help from the beginning. So, simply if we take the regular musical alphabet, the white keys on the piano C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C Then it's known as the C major scale But people also call it the C Ionian, which is the name of the mode So that's great, happy times, but how do you actually go from just being stuck in one position to being able to play across the entire fretboard while still being in C major? And that's exactly where the modes can come in and act as scale degrees, allowing you to connect the entire fretboard together. It also has another huge advantage that I'll show you in a bit. So, if we started with these notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, then the second scale degree of C major, the C Ionian, is D Dorian, as that's exactly the notes it includes. D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and back to D. Stretch that over all of the six strings and it looks like this. The note after that is note E and we just continue the same way. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. And looking like this over all six strings. And this shape is known as the Phrygian, starting from note E in our case. And now thanks to it, you can just take the same exact shape and just play it from the B string and you're playing in B Phrygian. So back to our C major scale, the fourth note is F and it goes G, A, B, C, D, E, F and that's the Lydian mode. Starting from G we have G mixolydian. G, A, B, C, D, E, F and just continue that across all six strings. After that from A we have the Aeolian and same as the Ionian is known as the major scale, Aeolian is known as the minor scale. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and back to A. And as you can see, we have a nice A minor chord hidden here. And the last note in C major scale is B, which looks like the Locrian mode. B, C, D, E, F, G, A, and back to B. With this approach, I'm using modes as shapes, as scale degrees that allow me to connect the entire fretboard together no matter where I am. So if someone tells me we're playing in E, I don't know, Locrian, I don't need to be just stuck here. I can simply add the rest of the modes together that will act as scale degrees and have the freedom to move across the entire neck. I know that we're not really changing between all of the different modes, but it's just the way I think about the fretboard and seeing it that way helps me in two ways. One, being able to connect the entire fretboard together, 
No matter if it's C. Lydian, I know it just goes Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian, Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, and back to Lydian. If you want to learn how to easily memorize and build all seven modes in any key, then somewhere around here you can find a video that will help you with it. And if you remember, I told you I'll share with you another huge benefit of viewing the modes this way, and that is being able to easily swap modes with their chords that is known as harmonizing the major scale. Basically, every single mode can be seen either as major or minor, with few variations such as minor 7 for the Mixolydian or flat 5 for the Locrian. But for now, that is a good starting point. So, Ionian is a major mode. Or major 7. Dorian minor. Or minor 7. Or minor 6. Phrygian minor. Or minor 7. Or minor 7 flat 9. Lydian major. Or major 7. Or major 7 sharp 11. Mixolydian major. Or dominant because of the minor 7. Aeolian minor. Or minor 7. And Locrian diminished because of the flat 5. Or half diminished as the 7th chord. So we're following the regular major, minor, minor, major, minor diminished, but unfortunately for some reason people get so lost when they are asked to do the same exact thing, for example from G Phrygian. But thanks to this approach of assigning modes one after the other, you can easily remind yourself Phrygian minor, Lydian major, Mixolydian major, Aeolian minor, Locrian half diminished, Ionian major, Dorian minor, and back to the Phrygian. And just like that, you exactly know what chords you can use to fulfill that G Phrygian vibe. Which is absolute lifesaver. The only disadvantage of this approach is that you'll never be able to hear the modes and the individual moods each of them creates. Which brings us to the second approach on how to use modes and that is the individual approach. So in order to be able to hear all of the differences each of the mode creates, let's play them from the same root note. And let's stick to the note C. The first one is Ionian. <laughs> Our home base, bright and joyful, represented by the major 7th chord. Increase the 4th interval and you get the dreamy Lydian. Followed by the major 7 sharp 11. If you go back to the Ionian and lower the 7th, you get Mixolydian. And you can hear the groove that comes in with the dominant chord. By lowering the 3rd to minor 3rd, you get Dorian. Represented by the minor 6 chord. Lower that 6 and you get the emotional Aeolian. Represented by the minor 7th chord. By lowering the 2nd, you get the mysterious Phrygian sound. That comes with the minor 7 flat 9. And the last and the most unique Locrian mode you get by lowering the 5th. Alongside the minor 7 flat 5 chord, known as half diminished. And there you have it, the two powerful ways how to go about modes. Whether you're connecting the dots across the fretboard or diving into the moods each of the mode creates, your playing is about to get a lot more interesting. If you've enjoyed the format of these videos, then please just let me know by hitting the like button. And as mentioned, if you're feeling stuck with your playing and just can't figure out on your own how to get your playing beyond the ordinary to have the ultimate freedom over your instrument, then click the first link in the description. Don't worry, there is no catch, free training, sign up to my newsletter, none of that. Just a straight up talk from one guitarist to another about how I can help you to get there. In full transparency, it is a website designed to get you to book a call with me. I'm not going to pretend it's not. You don't have to click it. I really don't mind if you do click it or not. But feel free to check it out if you're ready to get your playing where it deserves to be. 
Apart from that, thank you so much for being here. Keep shredding and I'll see you in the next video.